Hi and welcome back to the next lesson and the start of section 3. In this section we will build the next page which is going to be a risk trend page, risk trend analysis I've called it. Okay so let's get cracking. We're just going to add in a, a line chart because that's going to be our starting point for our trend. And we're going to build a trend of the number of defects over time. So we're going to use this week year as our axis to begin with and we're going to count the number of work orders. Okay, so this is basically going to give us the count of the number of work orders on that particular week year. And if we go back into our data, we can see that we've got a snapshot or a, a, a list of all of the work orders which are open in that particular week. And they've all been timestamped with that week. So all the work orders that are open on the 24th uh, so the 24th week of 2020 are in this list here, uh, are all the work orders that are open in week 25, 24, etc, etc. Okay, so that's going to give us that. Now I'm going to just sort this first of all, sort by week year. And um, we're going to sort by the ascending. Okay, so we can see here that we've got 24 through 2, um, 49. So that's going to be the total range that we've got in this data set underneath. It starts off at 1167, goes up to a peak at 1240, and then gradually comes down again to the point that it's at 790. So that's fine. However, we've got one issue. This week year, if I click on it, is actually a text field. Now, one of the things I want to add on here is a trend. And I want to use this analytics option here. So we can see there's an option to add a constant, a minimum, maximum, average, medium, percentile. So th there's a few options here to add additional lines, but there's not an option to add a trend. Now, the reason for that is because this data here is categorical data. It's not a date. It's not continuous data. So if I try and change that to continuous, it didn't work. So what we need to do is change this date here or change this week and year number or year number, week number into a date. And the date we're going to change that into is we're going to go and represent that by adding the date of the start of that particular week in that particular year. OK, so to do that, we're going to add a new calculated column. So let's go and go back to our data. And we'll add a new calculated column, a new column. And we're going to go and I'm going to paste in the value here. And I'll make that slightly bigger so we can see it. So this is the, the formula that's going to return a date. OK, so how it's going to work. First of all, let's cover the first two variables. The third one is where the magic happens. And I'm going to talk you step by step through that. But the first two are relatively straightforward. The first is using the function for a text manipulation function, left. And we input a text field, which is this, let me just scroll along here, which is this year here, which is what I've just previously looked at, and it's a text value. And it's going to count or extract the first four characters from the left, which is going to be the year. Then for the week number, we're going to use mid, which is another text manipulation function. It works using, or it requires three inputs. The first is the actual text string, which again is going to be year week. And then you enter a number of characters along the string where you want, when after which you want to start counting. So we want to start counting from the sixth, and then you enter the number of characters that you want to count from that point onwards. So we want to start in the sixth character and count two. So one, two, three, four, five, six takes us to two, and we want the two, and it includes the six character, so it's going to be the two and the four, and that gives us 24, which is the week number. The next one here, now I'm going to just nip across to, to PowerPoint and just show you a presentation for this. Okay, so here we've got uh, the requirement here. So the value in the table is 2020 week 24, there's actually a W in here, but the, the, the basis of this is the same. We've got the year, which is 2020, we've got the week, which is 24. So what is the start date of this week? Is what we want to find out. So we're going to use that by basically 
taking the start date of the year. So if I add that in first of all, just so you can see, each one of these blocks is a week, week 24, week 23, all the way back to the start of the year, which is week one, and even the end of last year, the, or the previous year, which is week 52. So we're going to start by taking the start of the year, which is going to be the date of the year number for the first of the first, so the first of this year. Okay, so that's going to be starting point. Next, we are going to find what the start of that week is for that year. Okay, so what is the start, the first, more or less the, the first starting day of the year is where we want to start accounting from. Now to get to that point, what we need to actually do is use this weekday function. Now weekday returns a day of the week for a given date, for a given week start day. So what this weekday function is going to do is it's going to provide this date here, which is the first day of the year, and it's going to go and find the date for that. Um, or this is going to transfer that into a date, basically, and it's going to return the week of the day that that date falls on, based on the fact that we're using this variable here, which is a type two, which basically tells this weekday function the start of the week is a Monday. Okay, so you can use different types to tell it start of the week could be a Sunday, it could be a Wednesday, it could be any day, but a two, a type two entered into this variable, this um, argument here tells weekday that the start, the first day of the week is a Monday. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, so it's day three. So what we've done is we've found the starting day, the start day of the, the, the year, and we've then found the day of the week that is, and we're able to use that to move back. So that's why it's a subtraction move back to the last day of the last week of the year, of the previous year. Okay. Now the reason is, is because we want to start counting from here. We want to start counting from the, the first week, the first full week of the year. Now we're going to count in weeks forward. And the reason we're going to count in weeks is because days go into weeks. There's seven days in a week and that's, that happens all the time. Weeks don't go into months and into years. Um, some, some months have got four weeks or months they've got five weeks because they've got different numbers of days in each month so we need to count in days and weeks and we need to count in full weeks and that's what is happening in the next part of this function so then we subtract the number of days gets us to the start of the first or the end of the last full week of the previous year and then we add on so we're going to start adding from this point the number of weeks minus one times seven. Okay, so you need to stick with me here. So we're going to add in, we're going to take the, the current week, we're going to subtract one from it, that's what this does, week number minus one, and we're going to multiply it by seven. And what that's going to do is it's going to give us the number of days in 23 weeks. And we're going to add that number of days on to this starting point here. So we're going to add that week, we're going to add the next week, the next week, the next week, all the way up to the week 27 until we get to this point here. Boom. Okay, so we're going to add 161 days, starting with this day here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, all the way up to 161, which will take us here. And that will be the current date. Okay, so this date here, minus 3 plus 161, brings us to this point here. And then we add 1, and then that is going to take us to the date we actually need, which is the first day of week 24. Now I'm sure there's other ways you can do it, but this looks like a, this is a way that I've done it here and it gets us to the right result. So that is going to get us to a date. We're going to now have a date and that can be used as a date data type rather than a text data type. So we'll go back to Power BI and we'll add this into the data model. Okay, so I'm back in Power BI. I'm going to go and paste in a description of what I've just talked you through here, the, fo the four steps here because you won't always have access to that PowerPoint presentation. You might come in here and think, what the heck, what on earth is going on here? So this is the these are the steps that explain what's happening with this formula here. I'll add that in and we can see here that it is here. Now we can format that because we don't want it to be, um, we don't want the time because the time is zero, zero. So we'll choose this one here, day, day, month, month, year, year, and you'll be different if you're in different parts of the world. 
and now let's go back and we're going to go and find our weak start date and enter that into the x-axis. So we'll get rid of the week and we don't want the hierarchy, we want the actual week start date. And here we can see it's scaled it nicely to be the month and the, the year, which is fine. We just want that for the trend, that's okay. If we go into the x-axis, we can now flick between categorical or continuous. Categorical will put in a, a value for every single data point in the x-axis. And we don't, we don't want that. It's um, it's better for it to be continuous. It's a, it's a trend. We're not really interested in each of the data points per se. We're just more interested in the trend at this point. And that's why we want to add the final bit, um, piece, which is now this trend line becomes available. You also can add a forecast as well. Uh, everything else is the same as before with the categorical data, but we've got a trend line, a forecast. So let's go and add that in. And we can see it's it's trended this information, trended this data points. And we'll just make that slightly subtler. And that is us for just now. Okay, so we've now got our baseline trend. Uh, we've converted, created a new calculated column, converted our year week text into a date that we can use to build a trend and the next lesson will be where we look at tidying up this trend here and adding a little bit of formatting. I'll talk to you then.